Welcome to the Fabulous Fitness and Beyond. I'm Jim Pollard, your co-host with my wife, Janetta. Today we're going to be talking about hearts for babies. This is an interesting project that is uh, done here in uh, Paducah, Kentucky, and it's one that you're going to want to know more about, maybe how you can get involved in. So you stay tuned and we'll be right back. And he'd say, go with what you got. Start from where you are. Give it your best shot. Keep reaching for that star. Get in the race, keep your own pace, keep moving and never stop. Just go, go, it go with what you got. Welcome back. I'm Jim Pollard with my co-host, my wife Janetta. Today, as I said, we're going to be talking about Hearts for Babies, a project here in uh, Paducah, Kentucky. Our guests today are Susan Marler and uh, Farrell Peebler. Right. Now, is this project only here in Paducah? Yes. Well, we also, we service some of the hospitals in Metropolis, in, well, beyond Metropolis, Carbondale and Marion, but all those ladies come to Paducah and help us. I think one thing is, is, is this the only chapter or is this like a nationwide thing? No, this is the only chapter. This is the only chapter here, here in Paducah. How long has it been going on? We've been going for three years. Three years. Did someone, how did it get started? Well, someone else started a group and it um, kind of went by the wayside. So some of uh, the remaining volunteers kept going and um, renamed it, it. Pardon me? Renamed the club. We renamed, we renamed the organization. And so we've been Hearts for Babies for about three years. Okay. Um, it's interesting, and it's, glad, it's good that somebody picked up the ball after somebody else dropped it. I, I, not to that I mean that's negative, but I mean that happens so many times that founders go on to other things, and, sure. and that happens, and it's good that there's always somewhere uh, to pick up the ball and run with it. So you are actually in Paducah, Carbondale, Marion, Mayfield, and Murray, and you work with the hospitals? Yes, sir. And uh, now I saw, the article that I saw was how you were helping a was it a mission couple or some foreign missionaries or somebody who came here from a foreign country with their baby? That was the article. Right. That was that was the former group. Okay. Okay. But yes, we did. We helped them and sent them back with a layette for their new baby with everything they needed to help their baby for the first few months. Okay. Is your uh, emphasis only local? No. I mean, when I say local, I mean in the local hospitals. And carbon down Mary and, mm -hmm. and yes. Murray, yes. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Now. Uh, Unless someone brings something to our attention, like the couple that was visiting right, here. Right, right. You, you'll do that also. Sure. Okay. Um, I thought I knew what it was, but I'm going to ask the question. What is a layette? You want to take that one? Oh, a layette consists of anything for a baby from the diapers, wipes, Gowns, pajamas, uh, quilts, afghans, anything that a baby needs to be comfortable, to be clean, to be loved. Uh, anything that we're, if we are asked for any special thing, we try to provide it. Okay, and that's the reason I asked that because somewhere in my mind I had it fixed that a layout was a piece of furniture. <laughs> <laughs> No. Yeah, no. Typical man, right? <laughs> <laughs> Evidently, you didn't have children. No, I got to, we had two, but I, you, you it was a long, long time ago. ago. No, 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 no. Every man but has said. But that didn't change. Yeah, but the every man has said, what is the layout? <laughs> but we put it all in a quilt and tie it up in a bundle like the Storks bundle. Uh, why don't we you, usually. Why don't we show it? We have one in a basket here so everyone can see, but we usually tie them in, in the quilt. In the quilt, so it looks like a stork bundle. Like a stork bundle. Like a stork bundle. Yeah, so I see. Why don't she let her go through go ahead, it? You kinda. go through it. Tell us what I'll do. They'll put there. a different camera and just kind of tell what well, kind Well, we have of receiving like blankets. There are receiving blankets. There are onesies. There's pajamas, nightgowns, washcloths, rattle, a bottle, a pacifier, a Bible, diapers, a stuffed animal. Oh, there's a bar of soap. Usually we put in a bar of soap. And usually lotion, baby lotion or baby, baby oil. Just whatever we happen to have that we, that the volunteers bring in or we find on sale at a good price, 
and we can put in for a new baby. See, that's, that's where, my, where I was confused, because I thought the layout was the basket. I'm sorry, <laughs> ladies. <laughs> And it's I thought you filled it up. <laughs> so it, it's actually what's in what's the basket. What's in the basket? It's the basket. It's the layout. Okay, oh. okay. All right. And, and do y'all make a lot of your things? We make just we about make everything, everything we possibly can. We can't make bottles. We can't make diapers or right. pacifiers. But right. we make the stuffed animals. We make the rattles. We make the receiving blankets, the onesies, the burp cloths, the burp. Yeah, the bibs. C can you dig out a rattle or anything? No, it's all tied it's up. It's all tied up. Used to could make the diapers, but you don't do that anymore, right? <laughs> <laughs> the kind that our kids had. You had some. We had kids, yeah. Right. But they we had, had the to white diapers side. that you washed and hang on the line. That's right. I, I can remember that. Yes, <laughs> I can too. Me too. Yeah, I, I was one of these men that did change diapers. <laughs> and in fact, I was pastoring when our first child was born, and uh, I said by the time she was six months old, she had been to like three workshops and study courses and everything. And I'd take her visiting. Uh, she would be working or in school, and I'd put a diaper, two diapers in one pocket and a ball in the other and pick her up, and we'd go visit and take That's off right. through church visiting. That's right. <laughs> she got an early start. She got an early start. Yes, she did. She'd actually been to a convention. She had, you know, before, before, before she was one. Before she was one, you know. <laughs> but uh, she, she's none the, none the worst part, though. That's oh, good. <laughs> good. That's <laughs> you know. good. Uh, we, we believed that uh, babies need to eat a little dirt, you know, and get, be exposed <laughs> rather than held back all the time. We but. very seldom ever know who gets the layettes. Uh -huh. It's uh, just who needs them. They are usually given uh, to the, the, to, in, the hospital. in the hospital. And uh, occasionally we do get a thank you note from the mother or someone that has received the layette. Because you do have, I notice there's a card in there that does tell who it's from. And, uh, and uh, we meet at the Lone Oak First Baptist Church the first Wednesday of the month. We meet at 9.30. Uh, sometime they leave at 1 or 1.30. They stay just as long as they they want to or can. Now, do you do any sewing there or just oh, the yes. compile? You actually sew there? Oh, oh yes. yes. Mm -hmm. uh, is a lot of it hand sewing and not necessarily machines? No, most oh. of it's machine. Oh yeah, they so they have machines there. Oh, for yes, you? we have machines. furnished the machines, the Wonderful. thread, and, uh, and we have a good time show. too. I mean, oh, I can imagine a bunch of women Our Christmas sewing party's and coming up. <laughs> no, our Christmas party's coming up, and we all bring food, and so oh, yeah. we're all looking yeah. forward to that. Yeah, well, yeah, it sounds like. Time. Sounds like the old-fashioned quiltings they used to have. have. Good time. We have a, a good time. Yeah, yeah. She used to. She talks about the quiltings that her mother used to have. You know, being raised in the rural I area mean, here sure. in Western Kentucky, uh, get together. Everybody bring a pot, and food, and mm -hmm. they'd quilt all day and have lunch and, and talk and have and talk. like you and say, have fun. Have fun. Mm -hmm. We talk sing or at gossip. Christmas. Talk. <laughs> we don't gossip. <laughs> no, no. I'm just kidding. But uh, so all of these different items, so a lot of the items you actually can make. Yes, we make everything we can. Mm -hmm. And a, mo a lot of it is made from flannel, like uh, the receiving blankets, the burp cloths, and the bibs. And the winter nightgowns and pajamas are made from flannel. So we need a lot of, lot of flannel. Because they're nice and warm and, mm -hmm. and nice and soft. Yes. Yeah, I uh, actually went out uh, two or three years ago looking for flannel. It's not that easy to find sometimes. Mm -hmm. And, and I find it because uh, I have aches and pains too, and I, flannel is good to wrap with. I mean, you know, if you wrap your wrist or ankle or something, it just, and of course, you put some Ben Gay or something in there, it helps, you know. <laughs> it gives you a, an odor. Yeah, yeah, I don't know it's the odor that helps her, it's the medicine. But anyway, I can remember as a kid that stuff getting rubbed on my chest and all that, you know. But uh, it's a, there's a lot of things that, uh, that, that go on. So you meet. The first Wednesday of every month, every month. from 9.30 until 1.30 right. at First Baptist Church, Long Oak. Long Oak. All right. Is anybody invited? Anybody. anybody. Especially if it's, you can sew. It's non-denominational. Non-denominational. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, how are you funded? Donations. We are looking for a volunteer to come in and do fundraising for us because most of us enjoy the sewing and all of that, but none of us are very good at fundraising. Mm -hmm. We don't enjoy that. So actually we're looking for a fundraising coordinator. I guess the first question I need to ask then is, are you, do you have any type of legal 501c3 
nonprofit organization status at this time. You are 501c3. Mm -hmm. So all donations are deductible. Yes. Okay. Of course, there's ways to do that through the church too, and and work it like that if you need to. Right. So, so you're looking. You're actually looking for someone to do that for you. Yes, we are, and for anyone to donate money or flannel. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this position is it a volunteer or a paid oh yeah position? no it's a volunteer. Volunteer. Everything's volunteer. Yeah, everything is volunteer, and every cent that is donated to us goes to the babies. Mm -hmm. and no one is paid anything. Yeah. Well, that's good to know. I mean, people like to know that, you right. know, and that's good. Uh, so, more volunteers and, and a fundraising coordinator. Uh, my wife has written some questions down here, and we'll let her ask them because those those were some of the things that she wanted to know. Okay, are there any requirements to be a volunteer? No, as long as you're able to climb about six no, about stairs, ten, about, about ten, 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 ten steps, about ten steps. About ten steps. Mm -hmm. Able and, and willing. Can, if you can't, we'll help you up there. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> we'll get you there somewhat. Uh, well, listen, we're going to take a break uh, on that note there, and, and we're going to, Jeanetta and Pam, we're going to talk about nutrition. Uh, they say that's the segment that I need to listen to and watch most of all because I love to eat. You can't look at me and tell that, but I have to keep up my image. But you stay tuned, and we'll be right back. Welcome back, Pam Ward. Today, Pam is a registered dietitian at Western Baptist Hospital, and she comes each week to share with us some of her nice tidbits that she has learned in these many, many years. You've been a nutritionist for a long time. You're going to age me here. No, no, no. no. <laughs> I've been at Baptist, uh, it'll be 19 years this spring. Wow. Yeah. So, yes, I've been doing this for, for a little while. Uh, it sounds like it. Yeah. What are we going to be talking about today, Pam? Well, Jeanette, in one of the previous shows, you know, we talked about the foodborne illnesses because of the E. coli, how, how rampant that's been in, in the right. news lately. So today I want to talk some about how to handle food safely at home because as we talked about before, often the contamination is not um, in the production, it's, it's in the production at home. The way that we do it's it. It's the way that we do it. So there's lots of things that you know we need to pay attention to that sometimes we don't, sometimes we get in a hurry, it slips our mind, you know, whatever it may be, but when we do those things, we run the risk of contaminating our food. And really there's just four major parts to it. Clean, clean everything. Wash your hands, wash the surfaces often. You know, if you're going from one food to the other, be safe, wash your hands again. It takes 20 seconds, you know, and, right. and it's going to be a good thing. Separate your foods. Don't cross contaminate. Don't cut your meat with a knife and then peel a potato with it or whatever it may be. Wash your utensils, wash your cutting boards, all those things every time you switch. Between now, if you're going to do like vegetables, a carrot, tomato, you're fine, but don't do meat. And dairy products, mix them. right? Because if that meat is contaminated, you've contaminated your cutting surface, and then you turn around and contaminate all the vegetables that you cut. So you know, keep your foods separate. Cook your foods to proper temperatures. Um, that sounds easy enough, but you know, a lot of times, like with burgers and meat in particular, people like it rare. You know, they don't don't want it they cooked. They don't want it, done. and that's obviously a personal. A personal choice, but by doing that, you are running a higher risk, you know, for contamination. And then a big one is chill food promptly. Don't leave something on the table, come back three hours later, and put it in the refrigerator because it's probably grown something in that three hours. You know, the, a good window is no more than two hours, and if it's over 90 degrees, no more than an hour. And if it sits out longer than that, throw it away. It is not worth risking your health. Your health to right. save, you know, two dollars worth of food. Just, just get rid of it. But things have to go in the refrigerator relatively quickly. And even how you put them in the refrigerator matters. You know, if it's something large, cut it into smaller pieces and put it in shallow containers. You want basically as much surface area as you can have because it's going to cool that much faster. If you have a large item, the outside will cool before the inside does, you know, the inner core. And as that inner core gets just a little cooler, a little cooler, things can grow in it. 
So you want to get it from hot to cold as fast as you can. So put those things in smaller containers, shallow containers. Again, the more surface area there is, the better off you are as far as cooling goes. So if you have a turkey or a ham or some, something like this and you need to cut it up. Go ahead and slice it or you know whatever it may be and store it that way rather than try to store you know, an whole, entire ham. Whole thing. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot smarter to do. And actually with meat too, and on the opposite end of the spectrum, when you're thawing them, um, I don't know about you, but you know, I can remember when I was younger and people, my mom, my grandmother, me, would just take meat out and set it on the that's counter right. and that's how you thawed it. That's right. It's a miracle we're, you know, we're not all sick. Uh, meat needs to be thawed in the refrigerator. That is really the only safe way to thaw meat. If you put it on the counter and that outer part thaws first and gets to room temperature, it can grow all sorts of microbes, all sorts of bacteria, and so it's Well, the rest of it is thawing. Exactly. So never, ever, I can't stress that point enough, never thaw meat on the counter. Always thaw it in the refrigerator. Um, red meat you can thaw in the microwave. Chicken, not so much type thing. Um, you can do a cold water bath, but those are a lot of work and they're not as safe as in the refrigerator. In the refrigerator is just going to be your best your best route. About how long does it take to thaw a turkey? Because this is turkey, turkey season. season. And actually we're going to talk about that on another show, but it's um, about 24 hours per five pounds. Okay. So, you know, you, you may have to pull your turkey out and put it in the refrigerator four days before Thanksgiving. Um, so yeah, about, about 24 hours per five pounds. So if you've got a big bird, you need to get it out early. It takes longer. It takes longer. It right. does. And don't thaw turkey in the microwave. You know, some of, some of the information I'm reading said that thawing, pol thawing poultry in the microwave is not a real good idea because of the, the potential for contamination. And I think that chickens and, and meat are easier, aren't they? Or, or they can be more deadly if they tend to become infect or infected, whatever you want to call it, more quickly. Perishable food in general do. Um, you know, your milk, your mayonnaise, anything that will go basically go bad, you know, if it sets out, those are going to be the things that are probably going to be more likely to become contaminated in the home. You know, of course, we have run the risks of some of the other foodborne illnesses from production outside the home, but in the home, that's typically what it's going to, you know, what's going to happen. Something else to watch is if, if you're at the grocery, get your meat and your produce last. Start at the back of the store, you know, but get anything perishable last because I don't know about you, but I can spend 45 minutes in the grocery easily. easily. Even if, an hour. Yeah, even an hour. And by the time you've had that food in your cart for an hour, paid, gotten home, you know, a lot of times, especially in the summer, you're out of that one hour window. And it's not a great idea. So get those things very last. Don't put your meat packages in your cart where they can drip on something. Okay, you may, you know, put your meat separately, put your other things over here. You don't want to risk that meat dripping, that meat package dripping onto your other foods and contaminating them. So that's something, you know, that you should, you should put separately. But at the grocery, get those things very last. And when you get home, get them out very first and get them in, you know, in the appropriate refrigerator, freezer, whatever it may be. Wherever you're going to put them. Wherever you're going to put them, you know. Right. And if you put meat in the refrigerator, because oh, I'm going to use it tomorrow, you know, with poultry and things, you really within two days, you need to get it cooked. Now, if you have thawed it in the refrigerator, you can refreeze it, you know. But if you have thawed it any other way, you either use it or you lose it. Don't try to refreeze it. Use it or lose Use it, it or lose <laughs> it. That's right. Use it or lose it. Um, but yeah, if it's thawed by any method other than defrosting in the refrigerator, you can cook it and freeze it if you want to, but you cannot refreeze it raw. Well, thank you so much for what you shared with us today. And I know that uh, people will make use of this, especially uh, during the holidays. And we look forward to seeing you again next week. I'll be here. Welcome back to The Fabulous Fitches and Beyond. I'm Jim Pollard, your co-host, with my wife, Jeanette, and our guests today are Susan Marler and Farrell Peeler. And we're talking about hearts for babies, hearts, the numeral four, babies. And uh, we've learned some exciting things uh, about the work that they do, and we hope that we've excited some of you to the point 
that you want to volunteer. And you know, I was thinking the one thing that we haven't given them is maybe a telephone number if they want to volunteer that they need to call. Well, they can call Lone Oak First Baptist Church. Okay, Lone Oak First Baptist Church. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where you meet. Mm -hmm. And so you can call Lone Oak First Baptist Church and they can give their money. That's how I got you ladies. Mm -hmm. I called there and they put you in touch with me. And we've actually had some other people from their own uh, on our program at different times also. But it's an interesting work. It's a challenging work. It's an exciting work that you do, and we're glad that you do it. Now, since our program is to inspire, inform, and motivate uh, people over 50, and um, Farrell said she didn't mind if we told how old she was. Do you want to tell us how I old you are? I don't mind. I'm 88 years old. 88 years old, volunteering, out there doing the work. Now, we had another man that was 75 that volunteers in disaster relief work. And he said, it's catching. Is your work catching? He uh -huh. said, once you do it, you want to do it oh, again? Yes. <laughs> I want to keep doing it. <laughs> you want to keep doing it? Yes. <laughs> but isn't uh, volunteerism that way when you get out there? Well, and I you think do it something? is. I think this is the most satisfying thing that I ever did. I never did work outside the home. Mm -hmm. I've just uh, raised one son, and I've just stayed at home. And uh, my husband was a heavy equipment operator. We traveled a lot. And I wouldn't take anything for my life. Yeah. But I, I really enjoy this more than anything I ever did. Oh, that's good. And that's a good testimony, people. So you need to get involved. Uh, you got some more questions now, there, I these, think. Uh, these, the people that you do these for, they're people that need it. And I'm, I'm a, you know, because if that's the hospital determines whether or not they need it and they, they give it to the ones, you know, and they do need these things for babies you know you just when you have a baby you have to take care of it mm -hmm. and uh, so th this is a, a a very great ministry it really is and, and it and it is a ministry now you say that y'all sew at the church but do you also sew at home oh yes i think what someone would would like to ask you is uh, do you have a job for me if i don't sew because all of us do not sew Yes. We sure do. We need someone to put layouts together. We could use, we will teach you to cut if you do not sew. That, if you, if you would like that. Because need, you could do that. You, anyone can do that. That's easy. Um, we need, we could use someone to put together a scrapbook. There's, there are many things you can do that don't require sewing. Have you started a scrapbook yet? No. Well, this is, uh, you know, there's... We have is, the pictures, but we need someone to put that together also. Okay, well, that is a, that's a job. <laughs> you know, but it's a, it's a fun thing, and the people are, as I, someone told me yesterday, they're addicted to it. They love, they love doing that, so... Well, someone, if someone's hooked on scrapbooking, come on down. <laughs> <laughs> come on, as they say, come on down. Yeah, right. they can use you. So there are uh, other things, you know, that, that you can do. Sure. And some of them really, actually, so running a sewing machine is not that difficult. Oh, no. Especially yeah. when you're just like him in blankets. I mean, him in blankets and things like that would be simple. Now, making right. a, a onesie or something like that is a little more complicated. Mm -hmm. But uh, they could probably learn to do that pretty fairly easily. We've taught several people how to use a serger that have never used one before. And that's what puts the finished edge on, like inside of your pants and everything. Right. Well, that's how we can finish the blankets. And they. They got hooked. <laughs> <laughs> We've taught people how to knit and to crochet. Mm -hmm. Even uh, teenagers in the summertime, we have some that come and want to learn how to crochet. And you make up little booties and sweaters mm -hmm. and things like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those are wonderful. And I was thinking that, that teenagers would probably love mm -hmm. putting the layettes together. And, mm -hmm. and we have to tell you, there's one gentleman who comes in and crochets at least a dozen Afghans a month. Really? He comes in with these afghans and he is having so much fun and those of us who have crocheted for a while will say, well, why don't you try this or why don't you try that? And he comes back the next month and he holds up his afghan and he goes, check this out. <laughs> I mean, and he is just, he has evolved from just doing one stitch to just making these awesome afghans with ruffles and, you know. Just he's decorating them. Wow. He's decorating them and having such, such fun. So Isn't you're not just a women's organization. No, we're not. <laughs> what uh, kind of what are your age? I know that there's no age requirement, but most well, I of think your our youngest one was thirty something, and probably Farrell here is our oldest. oldest. Yeah. yeah, but a lot of them are women, maybe who have retired, 
and yes. who are looking for something to do. Well, we have a little more spare time once your children are grown. Yes, you do. You and absolutely do. That's, because that's, children do take time and they take money, right. don't they? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. yes. What uh, you, you in the break you were telling us about this one lady that does burial clothing? We have one lady from Metropolis who makes burial the most beautiful burial clothing for the children who are lost, and um, she gives them an angel wing gown and a, and a blanket, and we put a little tiny stuffed animal in there, and just something for the parents who have nothing. She'll make an afghan if she feels that it needs an afghan, she'll just mm -hmm. make it as beautiful as she can. And she also does the little tiny buntings for the really tiny babies that are mm. lost. Like the preemies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so they can, the parents will have beautiful lasting memories because not all of them are prepared to lose a child That's that right. little. That's right. And so there's something that they can have a nice memory to take home. And then we give the families memory boxes, which are boxes that have a poem in it and a Bible and a book and just things to help with the loss of your child. Plus you can put little mementos for your child that maybe you purchased or someone had given you that you would like to keep. Right. And you can put it in the little memory box to have. Well, that's quite a ministry right there within itself mm -hmm. and uh, quite a blessing that she can do that and that she will do it, you know. And that's because... I couldn't sew and know that it was going to a baby that was lost. That's very hard. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard, but it, it has to be rewarding. It has to be. Oh, sure. Because the family, I'm sure they appreciate it so much. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's just such a trying time, and if people do nice things for you, I think it really does help. Yes. Well, we're about out of time, ladies, and I don't want to end on a down note. I want to. I want us to realize that Hearts for Babies is an organization mm -hmm. that does a lot of good work, it's makes a, a lot of people happy. I'm going to set this up here again, and I won't put it on the table, but I'll kind of tilt it like this, and they can kind of see what we're talking about. This is a layette, men. <laughs> and it's what's in it and not what is, what's uh, holding it. <laughs> but uh, we're glad that you ladies came to be with us today. Uh, we've learned a lot about your organization and the work. We want to encourage you maybe to get involved with this organization, Hearts for Babies. You can call Lone Oak First Baptist Church and find out the information. They meet the first Wednesday of every month from 9.30 to 1.30. And we want to encourage you to get involved and we encourage you to be back next week as we'll have another show. If you're interested in going to our website, it's thefabulous50s.net. 50s is spelled out. Give them our address, honey. P.O. Box 7, Bose, Kentucky, 42027. Use it or lose it. Uh, right. Can't see as well as I...